A lot of people seem to think that solving a coding problem is as simple as just reading the problem and finding an algorithm to solve it. However, it doesn't really work that way and when you follow that way, it brings you a lot of wrong answers and TLE your way. So let me show you how to approach a coding problem in order to maximize your chances of getting a correct answer and minimize the time and efforts put in. So how to approach a coding problem in five steps broken down. And one more step at the last is a bonus for you. So let's get into it. So the first step is read carefully. Now, this is a no brainer. Everyone thinks that they read the problem carefully, but be honest, how many times has it happened to you that you read the problem, you get to solving it, and later down the line, you realize that you messed up something while reading the problem, and that happens. And the major cause of this is because there's a lot of story given sometimes in the problem, you know? There's a lot of unnecessary story given that there's this character, he's trying to do this, he's trying to do that, and that's pretty much there to distract you. So what you need to do is read the problem carefully and after reading it, make it formal. So make a formal statement in your head as in what you should do to solve the problem. So forget the story and focus on the formal statement that there's an array and I want to do this in the array, something like this. So make a formal statement in your head, forget the story, don't get distracted by it. And like I said, read the problem carefully, okay? Now the next thing is figure out the time complexity that is required to solve the problem. And for that, you need to focus on the constraint. So a lot of people make this mistake. So suppose that the permissible time complexity of the problem is O of n, and you don't focus on the constraint, and you just get to solving it, and you go to a O of n square solution. Then it's gonna bring you a TLE, and it's just gonna waste your time. So just after reading the problem, figure out the permissible time complexity by looking at the constraint. And whatever it may be, O of n, so I'll just write O of question mark. So figure out what is permissible, okay? Now, after doing these two things, the next thing to do is play around with the test cases. So this is very important. So there's some example test cases given to you, play around with them, try to generalize. You know, from the test cases, a lot of times what happens is just from the test cases, you're able to generalize and get to a solution just from playing around with the test cases. So try to find a pattern, if there's a pattern, try to see if there's a general output related to the test cases. And from that, try to find what algorithm works, what approach is working. So it's very important that you spend some time with the test cases. Now, just the example test cases are not enough. A lot of time corner test cases are not given in the example test cases. So next step is figuring out the corner test cases. So what happens is that you figure out the approach and it seems to work perfectly on the example test cases, but it brings you a wrong answer on the actual test cases which are hidden. That's because you're not considering the corner test cases. So try to think of as many test cases as you can and try to think of corner test cases, you know? So you're able to avoid getting wrong answer while submitting. So focus on the corner test cases. This is again very important. And after doing all of this, just submit your problem now. Even after you do all of this, suppose you do all of this and you submit the problem and still you get a wrong answer, then this is what you should do. Here's a bonus tip for you. And the bonus tip is stress testing. So I don't know if, you have, if you've heard of this or not. Stress testing is basically that you bring in a lot of random test cases using random number generator. So you must know of random number generator and within the constraint generate a lot of random test cases and have two pieces of code. One piece of code will be the brute force approach which will obviously give the right answer. So this will give that the brute force approach will give the right answer, the correct answer no matter what. And on other side, you'll have your optimized approach. So you'll have two pieces of code. One will be the brute force approach and other one will be the optimized approach which is failing. And then what you're going to do is you're going to bring in a lot of random test cases using random number generator and you'll run both of these on that, okay? And then using an if, if statement, you'll figure out at what test case brute force is giving the right answer and your optimized approach is not giving the right answer. And with that, you'll figure out the test case where your code is failing. And once you figure out the test case where your code was failing, where your code was giving wrong answer, then again, play with the test case and again find an algorithm that now fits this test case as well and then again either modify your approach or optimize your approach whatever it takes and get a correct answer. So that's pretty much it. It's very simple. Just read the problem carefully, make a formal statement in your head, figure out the time complexity that is needed to solve the problem. And I'll stress this again, you should really read the problem carefully in one shot. You should not be making silly mistake when time is crucial. 
So read the problem carefully, figure out the time complexity, play with the test cases, form an approach, figure out an algorithm, whatever works, think about the corner test cases. And still if you get a wrong answer, then stress test your code and debug your code. So this is pretty much it. And if you have any specific doubts, let me know in the comments, I'll be sure to answer. Thank you.